getting foggy in here tonight, didn't he? Amen. How many of you were not here this morning? Would you raise your hand? You were not here. Where were you? Uh Good to see you. Good to see you. My heart was moved so much by the singing, all the singing. Tonight has been wonderful. Let me ask you to pray again for Mary and Ariel Sear. They lost their daughter last week. I told you, explained that to you this morning. A mother of three children. And I want you to pray for them. Pray earnestly for them. Then, the Jubilee, down at Lenore City. That's about a how many minute drive from here. Huh? I thought somebody said four hours. I thought that was wrong for sure. The Jubilee at Grace Baptist Church on Ford Road in Lenore City, Tennessee, where Brother Garland, uh, Brother er- Gurley is the pastor. I'll get it right in a minute. Brother Gurley is the pastor. Uh, it starts on the 18th and runs through the 22nd of July. My, you want to come to that. You don't want to miss that. That's Brother Lawson will be preaching on Monday night. Monday night's uh, the kickoff night, and so we want you to be there with us, expecting great services in the Lord. You know, I guess I'm just a patriotic slob. I uh, I love my country. Got a heap of faults, a lot of faults, but it's still the best country in the world. You let the this liberal crowd say anything they want to about her. I thank God I'm an American. I really mean that. Let me let me just do a little poll here. I don't know. It won't take just a minute. Let's set our watch back 30 minutes and we'll have plenty of time. <laughs> there we are. How many World War II veterans do we have here tonight? Would you stand, please? World War II. <laughs> Thank you. Now, I want to be counting that crowd, too. Amen. I'm one of you fellas, too. That makes five of us. And the best statistics that I can find, we're dying, I believe, it's a thousand a week. I may be wrong on that, but I believe that's about right. So our number is going to be called again. And uh, I, I want to tell you right now, I want to go out, praise God, loving the Lord, loving my country. Amen. Amen. So thank you, men, again. Amen. Amen. I wonder how many Korean uh, Korean battle uh, war veterans we have. Would you stand up? You from Korea, the Korean conflict. There's one. Amen. The Vietnam campaign. Would you stand? A lot of you fellas. Now there's wars going on right now, but how anybody that I've missed, any of the wars that I've missed, would you stand at first one of them? Amen. I don't want you to forget to pray for our soldiers now. Pray for them daily. I mean that. Here we are with uh, liberal politicians. Here they are trying to strike in God we trust from our, our currency. But I thank God I'm an American. I think we ought to stand right now, every one of us, and look at this flag right over here. And I want you veterans, you men of service, when we come, most of us uh, salute this way. I want you to salute our flag. I want us to pledge allegiance to our flag. Here we go. Salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Thank you.
Amen. Amen. Thank God. I, I love I love my country. I really do. I, I praise the Lord. And I saw somebody here a while back on a, I believe it was a motorcycle or something simple like that. I believe they had a, a flag on the seat of their britches. I don't think that's nice. You say what you want to. I may be old-fashioned, but I don't think that's, uh, that's not right at all. I want you to open your Bibles, if you will, tonight to the book of Genesis, chapter 47. Chapter 47, uh, verse 15. God met with us this morning in a mighty, mighty, mighty wonderful way. Let me say thank you to you that contributed to our financial well-being. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord just shower His blessings out on you. I wish you'd look at our at our web page occasionally if you can. If you've not signed the West Camp, the uh, guest book, I wish you would. Holdingforththeword.com I praise the Lord for that. I want us to read now from verse 15. And when money failed in the land of of Egypt, and in the land of Canaan, and all the Egyptians came unto Joseph, and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence, for the money failed. Now, Father, help me now, dear Lord, for a few minutes, to be able to say something that would glorify and magnify thy name. May somebody be saved tonight. May some woman, some boy, some girl, some mother, some daddy see themselves an old sinner that needs Jesus. And God get tired of the life they're now living and run to Jesus to be saved. Have your way, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. As long as I am able to breathe tonight, and as long as the Lord will give me breath to be able to preach this message, I want to just talk to you about some people in the Bible. So many times in this life we feel like we're having it awfully bad. So many times if we don't watch out, we'll whine and grumble and complain. Am I right? Say amen. Of course, there's no complainers here, is there? But when you begin to look in the Bible and look even around the day, you find out there's people that are having it worse than you've ever had it. I was standing some time ago in a mall talking to some fellows, and one man was standing there, I was sitting there rather in a wheelchair, and he looked up at me and said, Preacher, I'd give anything if I could do what you're doing right now. I looked around and I said, Well, what am I doing? That's so unusual. He said, standing up. So many times we look around and take what God has given us for granted. Just all the blessings that God has given us for granted. Even laughter. My great-grandson, he lives just a few yards from me the other day, walked up to me three years old. Three years old. And he walked up to me and looked up at me and said, Papa... I've been worried about something. I said, what's that? He said, I can't remember when you got saved. <laughs> Here I am saved in 1935 and he's trying to remember it. Amen. <laughs> he's something. God has and is good to all of us. Amen. Amen. We try to count our blessings, and we're not able to do so. You folks that are assembled here tonight, oh, this brother up here praying a while ago, he liked to crank my engine. When he was thanking God for his church. So many things we look around us, and we'll all agree that there are things that fail us. Here it was, the money failed. There's a lot of things that money can't buy. There's a lot of things money won't buy. But that day when I found my way, whoo, to the old-fashioned altar and got on my knees.
knees. I never had a dime in my pocket. But I cried out to God and asked Him to save me and thank God He saved me and made me a millionaire. Bless His name for that. I look at folks in the Bible. The Sephardician woman, here's a woman in Luke chapter 8, verse 43. A woman that had an issue of blood for 12 years. 12 long years. Now watch the next line. Which has spent all of her living upon physicians and neither of them could heal her. Here she was and tried everything. Here she was and went everywhere, spent all of her money, and still came out none the better. I see people so many times in church. Oh, I meet them day by day, church by church. They've tried everything and they're still miserable. But if you'll ever get a dose of good old time Holy Ghost salvation down below the collarbone, it will make a difference. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Somebody's talking about Brother Berman Cape. I've known Berman ever since, uh, well, when we came out of the ark. <laughs> I'm 81, he's 84. I've known Berman that long. But let me say this. See, Jesus can make a change in your life. Some of you are trying to make a change and it's not working. You've studied all the psychology books. You've read all the books on Dr. Bottle Stopper. You've done this. You've done that. And you're just as miserable as you was to start with. Amen. 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 Oh, Brother Berman. I never will forget this. I was... Uh, I drove an old 18-wheeler for many years. I knew the reputation of Berman. Now, if you tell him I told this, I'll just a night of a storm. <laughs> I know him, him and Evelyn, his wife, and I, I was instrumental in leading his son, Junior, to the Lord. Amen. And I was preaching revival in Berman's church. And I, before this was before Berman got saved. He'd come up to churches back in those days, never had air conditioning, and uh, he'd stand outside and look in the window and laugh. Oh, that's the kind of reputation. And he was one of those men that would uh, it didn't do to mess with. Oh, it just did not do to mess with at all. And I was driving an 18-wheeler, and one day, I was going down to a factory. I had a load on the trailer. I was going down to a factory in a little old one-lane road. And I saw all people coming, walking right toward me in the middle of the road. Right in the middle of the road, I looked and I said, Lord, have mercy, there comes that heathen cake. <laughs> And I said, Lord, what in the world am I going to do? He may be drunk. He may have two guns in his pockets. He may kill me. Oh, my soul. I drove right up to him. He wouldn't get out of the way. He wouldn't get off the right. He wouldn't get off the left. I drove right up to him and had to stop. Had to, he wouldn't move. Just standing there. And I just locked her down. He come walking around, and I saw the tears. He walked around the cab of the truck, and I rolled the window down just a little bit. <laughs> you knew him like I knew. You wouldn't roll it down at all. He rolled it down just a little bit. Old Berman looked up and said, Ed, I want to tell you I got born again. <laughs> tried the bottle, tried everything in the world, but when you tried Jesus, that took care of it. Yes, Here was the old woman that said, ah, she spent all of her money, she tried everything, hallelujah, but when, praise God, she got to, listen to me, there was a woman came in this crowd and she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole, and when she did, she was. Religion won't do it. Try to preach it, brother. Oh, I'm so tired of religion. I can't. Brother Charles said something a while ago. He always says something a while ago. And I love it every time he does it. He's talking about these professors nowadays. You know, they, they think they've got it. 
Oh, they think they know. There's just one profound thing I'd like to say to them. <laughs> they think they know everything. I remember one time, they, the professors, all oh, the professors. I remember one time I, I was in his church in, I believe in Texas or somewhere, and the preacher always, when he introduced me, he'd say, now I'll speak off. I'll speak off all the evening. I'll get so tired of that. One night I'd had all I could take. I got up and said, I'm not your speaker. I'm your preacher. <laughs> Amen. It's preaching that'll get the job done. It's old-fashioned preaching with the power of God on it that'll get the job done. She come to Jesus and said, if I could just touch the hem of His garments. And listen to what He said. Who touched me? <laughs> Who touched me? Yeah. And they said, "Wow, well, you're in a great big crowd of folks here, and they're all around you. Who, how come? He said, I felt verse go out of me. Oh, listen, Christ has what you need. It's not religion you need. It's Jesus you need. It's Jesus that will change your life. It's Jesus that will make a new woman out of you. It's Jesus that will make a new man out of you. It's Jesus that will make a new boy out of you. A new girl, a new son, a new daughter. It's Him that will turn your life around. There's some of you right here right now. Listen to me. Listen to me. There's some of you here right now that used to be. Some of you old, you were slaves to the bottle. Amen. But he touched you. Amen. I never will forget when my blessed daddy got saved. Daddy was a Cherokee and a bootlegger. The sheriff had just delivered a load to our house to bootleg. Well, he did. That's where we bought it from. He'd cut down a steel and bring it to us to sell. And we'd sell it. But I remember so well when Daddy got saved. I was over at the house with my mama. And he went over to church to laugh at them Christians. They'd have shout and jump up and down. And I heard Daddy coming through the woods going, ooh, ooh. I thought, my God, he's got a hold of some mean whiskey. He'll kill us all. But he'd run around the corner of the house and grab me up. I never saw Daddy like that. Grab me up in his arm and begin to do something he never had done before. He began to kiss me. He never had told me he loved me, but he said, I love you, boy. I love you. See, it's not that anything in this world's good that'll turn you around. It's Christ that'll turn you around. Amen. Praise the Lord. That old girl, bless her heart. Said Mark in Mark chapter five verse twenty six, and had suffered many things of physicians, and spent all that she had, and was nothing the better, but rather grew worse, just getting worse all the time. He touched me, oh, he touched me, and oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I. He touched me and made me whole. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes, amen. Here was an old girl getting worse. All the time. Just getting worse all the time. No better. Tried everything. Spent all of her money. I know good. there's good doctors. And I know that God used them sometimes. But sometimes... I, that little old baby that I sent out a prayer grandma the other day on the internet, two weeks old, and uh, it just looks like it's going to die in a minute. I know his mom and his daddy. These doctors walked up with their godlike faces on and said, "Well, don't know much we can do, but people begin to pray." Yes. 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 Amen. Yes. They said up here in the brain there's a blood vessel just dangling. That old mother said, Oh, preacher, I don't want to start cutting on my baby. Mm-hmm. Bless but all of a sudden, God said, I can take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 
I'd like to be a fly on the wall. <laughs> when the doctor went back in their lounge to take their coffee, when some of them said, what happened? <laughs> Trying to explain it. See, there's only there's one thing you got to do. God can. God can. Now, this woman here got worse all the time. But I tell you right now, if you'll ever get to Jesus with your problem, He can turn your life around. I watched him. I saw my daddy pour out gallons of moonshine, and that he tore out and got him a job and went to work and praise the Lord. Yeah, I never saw him wobble on the axle another time. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Amen. But it's real. It's real. Oh, I know it's real. Somebody say it's real. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good, ain't it? Anyway. Here's another fella. We call him the prodigal. Sometimes you'll look at this boy and you'll say, well, he must have slept on the wrong side of his head and the brain went out of the ear. He just didn't seem to have it all together sometimes. In Luke chapter 15, verse 14, and when he had spent all, See, here they are trying to still work it out with money. Spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. See, when your money's all gone, the question's not answered. Amen? It's just not answered. There's some of you sitting here right tonight. Right now. Somebody said, when I do that, your finger looks like it's a mile long. Some of you sitting here right now. You try to do better, don't you? You try to turn around the road, don't you? You try to take on a do better pill. You try to go into church, but that misery is still down in here. That old, that old, this, that old I, I can't live like this is still down in here. But one trip to Calvary will take care of it. Amen. Just one trip to Calvary. One time down on your knees. How many of you remember that time? Oh, yes. Yes, amen. Yes, sir. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hey. Yes. I'd like to see them hands again. How many of you remember that time? Yes. Hey, what about me? Amen. Yes. I, both of them. Hallelujah. I remember that. Yes. Yes. Amen. Got down on my knees. Hallelujah. August of 1935. Praise the Lord. Did you hear that? Yes, sir. Got out on my knees and told the Lord I was sick. Now, that's where some of you failed right there. Right. You won't confess you're a sinner. Right, right. right. Amen. Exactly. You won't own up to it. But you're never going to get saved till you get lost. Right. 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 You never are. It's never going to happen. And you can spend money. You can drive to this church, that church. You can do what you want to. But you'll never find peace till you find it in Jesus. Right. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Now, watch this next verse. In verse 17, it said, And when he came to himself. Amen. Do I hear amen right there? Amen. You remember that time you came to yourself? Huh? You saw yourself for what you really was? I've told this story so many times and I love it. I was driving a truck in those days. I remember I was coming in from a trip. I uh, backed my trailer into the dock, and it was lunch hour. And everybody was gone to lunch. Nobody in the warehouse, the old freight terminal. And I got my bills of lading and went to lay them in the office. And I saw a young black boy going around picking up bottles for those old drunk heads and rum heads and setting a bottle over here. He had him a bottle. And he was pouring the drippings out of one bottle, slobber, wine, or beer, whatever. He was mixing the whole concoction. And he was mixing it up. And I didn't know what the world was going to do with it. And I watched him just a minute. And before I could bat an eye, he must have had about that much he'd, he'd got. It. And before I could bat an eye, he downed it. Can you imagine? I went over to him and scared him. I, I know I must have. 
But I picked him up, just a little old boy, and set him up on a big old crate. And I began to talk to him about Jesus. Begin to talk to him about Jesus. How Jesus loved him. How Jesus died for him. His eyes looked like they got that big. Oh, begin to tell him how Jesus went to the cross. How Jesus suffered and died for him on the cross. And I, I relinquished my grip just a little bit, and boy, he was gone. I mean, he took off. Years later, Miss Blue and I were in that same town. I said to her, let's drive down to, down to the depot where I used to work. And we drove down there, and there was some other business hit. There wasn't a, wasn't a freight truck no more. And I started to pull through the yard and go on. And I heard somebody say, Hey, Ralph! Hey, Ralph! And I stopped. A nice, very nice looking young black man dressed in a suit with a towel, run up by the side of my car and said, Ralph, you remember me? And I said, no, I don't believe I do. And he pointed at that girl. He said, one day, you told me about Jesus. Oh, you're missing it. He said, you told me about Jesus. He said, now, Rev, I work in the church full time. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you right now, it'll turn you from a drunk to a sober man. It'll turn you from a beggar to a saint. When you meet Jesus, it'll turn you around. Amen. Yes, sir. And me and that fellow guy got out of the car. We had the neck hugging a spell you ever saw in your life. Amen. He was my brother. We were brothers in Christ. Somebody said, I, I just wonder why all you church folks say brother and sister. Because we got the same daddy. Yes, yes, you missed it, didn't you? We've all got the same father. I saw women of the street. They call them ladies of the night. They walk the street in search of satisfaction for the flesh. I saw those girls come to know Jesus Christ yes, and make decent wives and decent mothers. Amen? Amen. It'll turn you around. Amen. When the money had run out and failed, it was Jesus that was the answer. Amen. Yes, amen. amen. The old prodigal. In Luke chapter 15, verse 18, he said, I will arise. Do you hear it? I will arise. Do what? And I'll go to my Father. And I'll say to my Father, I'm ready to get baptized and do better. Huh? I'll try to do better on that this day. I'll arise and I'll go to my Father and I'll say to my Father, I need a pill for my problem. No. I'll arise and I'll go to my Father and I'll say to my Father, I've sinned. Amen? I'm the more worthy to be called thy son, but make me as one of thy hard servants. That old daddy, I like that fellow. Oh, I see him. He run out and put, put his arm around him and said, boy, we're going to have a party. Amen? And that other brother was in the field. I believe I used to pastor him. He come in and started grumbling, complaining. That's right. <laughs> I know members like that, don't you? You don't. You don't have any members like that, do you, brother John? No, no. You don't have any members who do that. No. Come on, preacher. I'm going to come on. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just. I'm just kind of jumping through from here to there. Hope you're getting something out of it. Here's another fellow I want to talk about. Here's another fellow I want to talk about. Jesus Christ and his disciples were in a ship. Here was an island or a place of land over here. And they were heading in that direction. And here was a, a man up in the graveyard. Oh, he was a wild man. No senses of 
Oh, he was a bad, he was a wild man. And he lived in the tombs and cut himself with a stone. He was what some call the maniac of the dead. Oh, he was in bad shape. In bad shape. That may be, you may be in bad shape, but you can leave here tonight happier than you've ever been in all your life. Amen. 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 Here was this old maniac of Gadira up there screaming naked. Oh, in awful, awful shape. In awful shape. But suddenly, that little old boat that Jesus touched the land, and Jesus stepped out. Amen. Headed toward the graveyard. And I could imagine, now this is blues interpretation. Now the, somebody might say, hey, you better not go up there. There's a maniac. Didn't slow him down a bit. Right. Never yeah. slowed him down a bit. He went up there. And they said, what am I to do with thee? And Jesus said, what's your name? He said, I'm legion for a minute. And he said, come out of him. I'm glad there was a day Jesus said, come out of him. I'm glad there was a day Jesus looked at me and said, come out of him. Get out of him. (laughs) He's mine. Do you remember that day he said, come out of him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, I I like it. Yes, sir. Watch it a little closer now. Watch it. Watch it. Come out of him. And the next picture we've got is this man, the same man, sitting at the feet of Jesus. Clothed. Now they had tried everything they could try on that old boy. They tried to reform him, get him to do better. Couldn't help him. But he was sitting at the feet of Jesus. I like this. Oh, the moderns don't like this. He was clothed. And in his right mind. <laughs> you dig it? Yes, Clothed in his right mind. Now watch this. Jesus started to leave. And he said, that, I will go with you. That's the way it is. We always want to go with you. But now notice, Jesus said, Go home to your friends and tell them what's happened. Some of you haven't caught on to that yet. You're supposed to tell. You haven't got it yet, have you? Why are you keeping something so good a secret? Start telling it. Everywhere you go. I don't make no difference. Tell about it. Amen. I I was in the South Georgia last weekend. Get this. You said they don't like it. Don't make no difference. It was raining. Raining. I'm talking about raining. And there was one of these highways, we've got two lanes here, uh, and two lanes here, and a middle little place of grass grew up between them. It wasn't the main highway, but coming out of a, out of a, 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 a mall. And I looked and saw something that just blessed me to death. Raining, and here stands a little teenage girl with an umbrella over her head. Brother Hobbs, this is the first picture I saw in a long time. Over her head. Holding up a little sign and on her chest said, Jesus loves you. Amen. You said, Did you ask her if she's a Baptist? Nope. <laughs> I'd be surprised if she was. <laughs> Most Baptists wouldn't do that. But it did stop. I got out. And I said, Yes, I know he loves me. The big old grin come on her face. And she said, Aren't isn't it good to be saved? <laughs> <laughs> Made me want to do something religious, take up an offering. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Amen. I said, do many people stop? She said, no, but they can't miss my sign, can they? <laughs> Here she was with an umbrella. With an umbrella, with a little chain around her neck, but that little sign said, Jesus loves you. Just standing there, not preaching, not saying a word. Not no sign that said, I'll work for food or nothing. Amen. With a real umbrella. Do you think God didn't see that? Do you think God didn't see that? I believe God saw that, don't you? Amen. And He said, go home and tell. Since you've been saved, why don't you go tell? Why don't you? Amen. 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 Tell somebody. They want to know. Then I'll, I've got one more. And then I'm close. You know what I believe tonight? I believe somebody here tonight has just realized you're a sinner and Jesus is your only answer. He's your only answer. I don't mean He's one of your answers. He's your only answer. Amen. Hallelujah. Your only answer. If you don't come to Him, you're going to die and go to hell. I don't mean that awful. I just tell the truth. But now here's one more man. Found him, you find this fellow in Jonah 2 and verse 4. Then he said, Jonah said, Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. I will look again toward the holy temple. Amen. Notice Jonah 2 and 5. And the waters come past me about, even to the soul. The depth pulled around about me, and the weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottom. Get that. I went down to the bottom. Gone as far as he could go. And then he said, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. Amen. And my prayers came unto thee, unto thy holy... Let me tell you right now, one of these days, you're going to hit the bottom. And I hope you'll realize that He's your only answer. Amen. Somebody here right now. Did you, did you folks get a blessing when these little old girls stood there? Yes, sir. Saying about that life out. And then when those, say, old Berman Cape song, Holy Bible, I remember that. But I'm going to tell you something. You may say, well, you old Christians are crazy. Think what you will. I've got a peace down in here you can't take away. Not even the devil can take it away. I've got a deep, settled peace in here that the devil tried, but he can't do it. Amen. There used to be a song that said, Peace like a river flows through my soul. I've been forgiven, cleansed, and made whole. Amen. August of 1935. I found the Lord precious to my soul. I came to know Him as Savior and as Lord. I got born again, washed in the blood. The, the Bible said the precious blood got washed in that precious blood. You like that, Brother Charles? That precious precious wasn't born again of corruptible things no no but of an incorruptible for that precious blood he washed me oh I like that old song what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus if you're here tonight I never even took a text I just jumped around through the Bible picking out people that only Jesus can help. Yes. How many of you here right now there was a time in your life when you found yourself on the bottom? Amen. That's a good place to get saved. You remember that? Yes, sir. On the bottom. Couldn't go no farther. 
Wasn't no further else to go. You was down. You were out. You, but then you turned to who? Jesus. Turn to Jesus. Oh. How many, most of these are men. How many of you women ever remember a time you hit the bottom? Huh? Amen. 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 How many of you teenagers remember a time you hit the bottom? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Isn't it wonderful? I feel something turning over down in here. Oh, what a night it would be for you to get saved. What a time it would be for you just to get out on your knees and say, I'm on the bottom. I'm going as far as I can go. I don't want to go no farther. And ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart. He'll do it. Yes, Amen. Amen. I want the piano player to come. Get ready to sing our invitation song. My, I'd like to go on, but I told Brother Roger a while ago, my congestive heart failure kicks in, and I find it hard to breathe. I find it hard. And I found that breathing is real important. <laughs> you just got, somebody said he's looking for words. No, I'm looking for a breath. I'm just looking for a breath. But oh, listen, don't feel sorry for me. I want to preach as long as I can. And Brother Charles, if I get to where I can't preach but about five minutes, would you let me come and preach? Amen. Amen. Just let me come and preach. I want you to play softly, please, ma'am. 384. 384 is going to be our song. Look up here at me. Look up here at me. Are you on the bottom? You got as far as you can go. The woman tried money, failed. Spent all she had, wasn't nothing the better. Oh, couldn't be helped. <laughs> the old man up in the graveyard that tried to tame him, didn't work. Didn't work. But one trip to Calvary yes. will solve your problem. Yes. You believe that? Yes. I won't ever hit bell. Every eye closed. And every Christian praying. I wonder if somebody said, Brother Blue, I'm tired of sin. I'm tired of being like I am. I'm on the bottom, preacher. I'm tired of being that way. I need Jesus tonight. Would you raise your hand and say, pray for me? Honey, God bless your heart. I want you to be safe so bad tonight. I want you to come to know to Jesus. Now, it's Brother Charles, a lady over here, raise her hand. I want some of you, I want you ladies to pray for her right now. I wonder if there's another who I'm so tired of living like I am. That's the way, honey. Come on. Come on. I wonder if there's another one right now who said, I'm tired of this kind of life. Lady, why don't you get up and come on? Ain't nobody going to laugh at you. Come on, honey. Come on. I ain't going to laugh at you. I'm your, I'm your friend. Come on. Come on. Oh, if the devil can keep you there another minute, he's won the battle. Come on. What's wrong with you? Huh? What's the matter? Have you ever been saved? Don't know. We're right here to time to find out right there. Brother Charles, put me somebody on this girl. Come on. Come on, dude. I'll, I'll, I'll walk with you if you'll come on. I'll walk with you. Oh, just meet me here. I want you to know Jesus. I want your life to be true.